Hi, welcome to Harris BI. This video is about Microsoft Fabric Data Flow Gen 2. In this video, I'm going to cover what is Data Flow Gen 2, how to create a Data Flow Gen 2, and I'm going to talk about the difference between Data Flow Gen 1 and Gen 2, and so on. If you are new to my channel, please click the subscribe button and bell icon to get the latest updates. Let's get started. Data Flow Gen 2 is one of the component which got added as part of the Microsoft Fabric. So you have to create a workspace and that workspace should have a fabric capacity on it. So either it can be a trial or a Microsoft Fabric capacity. Once you have the workspace created with the fabric capacity and if you are in a Power BI experience, you can click new and you will see an option called the Data Flow. This is Data Flow Gen 1. To see a Data Flow Gen 2, just click uh, show all. It will show a data factory and as data factory you will see a data flow gen 2. Right? Uh, either you can go like this or you can go to data factory experience and you will see a data flow gen 2. And when you click uh, data flow gen 2, it will land in into a data flow gen 2 uh, page where you can start create a data flow. So this is the landing page where you have option to connect to different data sources as like uh, data flow gen 1. Uh, let's get started with uh, importing an Excel sheet and let's create a data flow gen 2. So I'm choosing import from Excel and I have a Excel stored in my local. I'm choosing this option upload file, click browse and then I'm selecting this Excel file. Since I have uploaded from my local uh, system, this file will be loaded into the SharePoint site. From there, uh, the data will be extracted. So moving forward, if you want to uh, load the updated file you have to make sure to go to this uh, site so which is this and then go to apps folder and you will see a folder called microsoft uh, power query this folder will be automatically created as part of loading that excel file uh, on power bi experience and go here and you will see an upload uh, uploaded files folder created within that you will see uh, uh, the file that you uh, loaded uh, uh, now which is this file uh, adw sales product and now you can click uh, next once you have uploaded the file and the experience that you get uh, after that uh, file loaded will be same as uh, data flow gen 1 or even uh, it will be same as the power bi desktop uh, power query experience choose whatever uh, sheets that you want to load as a table and then click create once these uh, tables are loaded on power query layer you will see the exact same experience as like uh, data flow gen 1 but if you see here, there is a new feature called uh, data, uh, sorry, add data destination. So this will help you to store these results after transformation to a different uh, target systems. So as of now, these are the different uh, data sources are supported. You can load these results into either SQL database, Lakehouse or Data Explorer or even Synapse Analytics. So let's try to do uh, some transformation. At, uh, so I have selected uh, the product table and I'm choosing a specific uh, column. So I don't want uh, a reorder point and then wait, click OK. So I've done a very simple basic transformation. So now let's try to use this option add data destination. So when you choose this option, you have to choose uh, the, the respective databases or data sources. I'm going to choose this Azure SQL database. So which means I want to store these results, the product table uh, results into this uh, database table. So I can pass my Azure SQL Server credentials and I have the uh, uh, the connection created already. Click next. This is the name that uh, uh, table will be created on your uh, the target database. And you have two options. Either uh, this will create as a new table on the selected database or if you have the table already in place with the, the proper uh, uh, column and data type, you can choose the existing table from any of this uh, the database. So I just selected new table, click next. And here you have two options. So one is, uh, let's say if you want to run this data flow and you uh, whenever you want to run the data flow, you want to truncate and then load new data, you can choose this option, replace. Or let's say if you want to load or append uh, uh, data on a daily basis, you can choose append option. But now I'm going to choose replace and uh, make sure all of these columns are uh, mapped and you have some warning. Well, let's ignore this uh, for now and click uh, save settings. 
so once uh, this save setting is done uh, which means uh, all, all the configurations are done and if you want to do the same thing for the other table internet sales you can still do that if you have not selected any table or if you have uh, selected multiple table you will not see this option uh, available add a data destination this is something for a specific table let's say if you want to uh, configure add data destination you have to choose the specific table then you will see a uh, add data destination once you have configured the added data, data destination for this table you will not be able to configure one more destination for the same table because as of today this is just supported for only one data source right if you see here this is the one that we have configured which is showing under data destination if i go back to the internet sales you will see the data destination option is available because we have not configured for this table either you can choose it from here or you can go here and then you can see an option plus and then uh, you should be able to select this okay for some reason this is not showing up but you can still click this plus symbol you will see something similar as this and then you can configure it so that's all i can click publish in case if you don't want to save this if you want to go back you have option to close this whole window now i'm going to publish this so once this is published you can see this is the flow that we have created so this data flow gen2 is uh, uh, created on top of lake house so that's the reason uh, you can see there are uh, additional components got added on the same workspace this is to help uh, adding a staging layer from there the data will be pushed to the uh, that uh, destination systems and uh, since it is on top of uh, one data lake you have the uh, lake house created if you click refresh your page you will see a lake house created for this uh, data flow and uh, whenever you start create new data flow the same uh, set of components will be reused there will be a new staging uh, layer created for uh, each data flow that you create and if you see here this is the uh, uh, lake house where the data is stored as a parquet file moving forward these artifacts uh, will go in a hidden state because uh, people may get confused with these artifacts so this is something uh, created just to support this uh, data flow right uh, so this is the primary component at lake house and uh, to connect this lake house either through a sql endpoint or a data set power bi data set you can use these two additional components right once this is uh, uh, created now we can refresh this data flow so this is uh, so this refresh got uh, kick started already let's wait for this refresh to be completed so once so this refresh is completed you can go to refresh history and you can see the status you can see the the refresh got completed uh, one thing to note here if you choose the data flow gen 1 you will see the same uh, refresh history to see the detail information you have to download that uh, in information into a csv and then you can see the detail information whereas here in data flow gen 2 you can open this and it will give you the detail information where you can see uh, uh, how many tables got processed or uh, uh, transformed and what is the destination activity that got created or configured and uh, whether the data is loaded or not you can see the complete uh, detailed information here and if i go to internet sales you will see uh, uh, some more additional information like when it got started when it got ended and duration and you can if you go to the, the activities where we have configured the uh, data destination if you go here you will see like uh, uh, how many rows are there right uh, and what is the time it got started duration and etc right well, let's say if this data flow got failed right if you want to understand uh, uh, when this got failed right or which table causes that uh, fail you can go and check uh, the specific table you will see whether it is succeeded or failed and you can go and identify the issue and you can fix it easily so this is one of the interesting addition to data flow gen2 for a, a better visibility of uh, how the data are flows uh, from the source to target so we have both data flow gen1 and gen2 data flow gen1 is uh, using azure data lake uh, cdm folder architecture whereas this uh, data flow gen2 is using uh, modern lake house architecture Right, so this is more powerful in terms of uh, uh, getting more compute and process the data and uh, load it, load the data into the target system uh, easily and uh, effectively right uh, but still uh, you have uh, some use cases where you have to use the data flow gen 
so we have a detailed documentation available on microsoft site i'll share the link on the description so this is a comparison like data flow gen 2 and gen 1 and if you see data flow gen 1 has covered all of this but if you see these set of features which are not available in data flow gen 2 right so direct query option is not there in data flow gen 2 which you have to go and use data flow gen 1 and then incremental refresh is not there ai specific insight supports are which are not there in data flow gen 2 but you have uh, added advantage like uh, you have data flow created and also if you have configured the add data destination and then same table can be used for your data sets power bi data sets right you still can create a data flow gen 2 without configuring add uh, data destination right? the same data can be used for your uh, power bi data sets the experience on uh, consuming these data flow tables uh, on power bi desktop is still same so how you connect your data flow gen 1 uh, tables or entities in the same way we are going to connect uh, data flow uh, tables and um, uh, not just this right uh, since they have introduced to data flow gen 2 you may be interested to use data flow gen 2 for various reasons if that is the case uh, you have option to export your data flow gen 1 and import it into a data flow gen 2 architecture right so to do that you can go to your uh, data flow gen 1 so this is data flow gen 1 and uh, you have option to export the template go to edit and you will see an option called export template so you can click export click ok and this uh, uh, data flow uh, got exported as a .pqt file power query template file now you can go back to uh, the workspace where you have the uh, uh, fabric capacity you can go to new and you can choose data flow gen 2 so here you have option to upload your uh, pqt file you can see import from a power query template file choose this and you have to choose the, the downloaded file once you have selected the table got loaded into data flow gen 2 and you can configure the connection so once you have configured the connection you will start see the data here and whatever transformations that you have applied on data flow gen 2 all will be available here and from here you can publish it and this will create as a new data flow gen 2 component okay let's talk about the integration so data flow is the component which is uh, widely used on uh, multiple places one is data mart let's say if you are creating a power bi data mart you will see the data flow experience and uh, let's say uh, if you are creating a data pipeline as part of the data factory experience and there you have option to create a data flow gen 2 or let's say if you are creating a lake house right if i go to create a new lake house you will see an option uh, to uh, use the data flow gen 2 experience to to uh, extract and uh, transform and load the data so these are the different places that data flow gen 2 got integrated uh, uh, across uh, fabric let's discuss about the schedule refresh as like data flow gen 1 you have option to uh, set up a schedule refresh for this uh, data flow gen 2 data flows but you don't have a incremental refresh option to configure the schedule refresh you can go to the three dots and you can see an option called settings go to settings and you will see an option uh, refresh so this is a place where you are going to configure the refresh and uh, you have one more option let's say if you want to uh, go to the refresh history you can go to the refresh history and you have option to either refresh it now or you can go back to the the same scheduled refresh or let's say if you want to uh, refresh this data flow as part of your etl pipeline you can still do that let's say you are creating a new data pipeline as part of uh, uh, data factory experience let's name this as uh, different click create and here uh, your data engineering team is going to create uh, uh, different pipelines and you can still add your data flows here data flow and then if you go to settings you will see the data flow which are created as part of the same workspace will be listed out and you can choose and then save it and you can uh, configure the schedule right so which means this data flow uh, gen 2 will be triggered as part of your idf pipelines so that's about data flow uh, gen 2 i hope you like this video please click the like button and share it with your friends and colleagues thank you